Hey everybody, going to talk to you about a few Veterans Affairs bills that passed this week. Important, uh, obviously I love our veterans, I am a veteran, uh, and I always think about what it is that we can go out there and do to make sure that our, our men and women from the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard, uh, what we can do to make sure that they get the best possible care. So talk about a number of those bills that we worked on this week. Number one, HR 1812 or 1812, Vet Center Eligibility Expansion Act, important piece of legislation that it allows veterans and service members including those who serve during things like national emergencies uh, and they it would basically say that they can qualify to receive counseling at community-based Veterans Affairs Department facilities under this bill HR 1812 uh, the bill does a couple of other things it would allow additional veterans and members access to these vet centers if they served on active duty in response to like I said a national emergency or a major disaster that's been declared by the president or in uh, those that have been in the National Guard under a governor's order responding to a disaster or a civil disorder or those that are uh, in the Coast Guard as part of a drug interdiction operation. Uh, the VA, they would also have to submit a plan to provide vet centers uh, in different areas that don't currently have them, including in U.S. territories. So that bill, it's all about providing more access to counseling for our veterans, uh, for those that don't currently get it or th those places that may not have the opportunity to have that right now. Another piece of legislation, H.R. 233 and that's the Support for Suicide Prevention Coordinators Act. Again, anything having to do with veteran suicide, <clears throat> close to my heart. I've lost a few friends um, by their own hand and it's something that we're always trying to think about. What is it that we can do better? How can we make a better system? Now the Government Accountability Office under this legislation, they would have to assess the Veterans Affairs Department uh, support for its suicide prevention coordinators under HR 2333. This bill, it requires uh, the GAO, Government Affairs Office, to assess the coordinator's responsibilities, their workload, their training training, vacancy rates, things like that. Uh, it, it's going to require an evaluation of the VA's oversight and, and determine whether the use of the coordinators uh, has been appropriate, how it varies among department facilities. The GAO would have to submit a report to Congress on its findings uh, within a year of the bill's enactment. So uh, again, just being accountable on what's going on uh, in that fight against suicide. Um, additionally, uh, in that fight against veteran suicide, there's a bill, HR 2340, and it's called the Fight Veteran Suicide Act. Now this bill, uh, for the, it, it would require the Department of Veterans Affairs to notify Congress about specifically any veteran who died by suicide at a Department of Veterans Affairs treatment facility. The VA would have to provide notice of the suicide uh, or the attempted suicide within seven days along with the name and the location of the facility. Uh, within 60 days, the VA would have to basically provide information as long as it's available on the veterans enrollment status in the VA health care system, uh, the most recent encounter with the Department of Veterans uh, Health Care Administration, whether the veteran had other medical insurance, maybe something like TRICARE, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, the veteran's age, race, gender, uh, you know, their, their sexual orientation, as well as marital employment and housing status. So a lot of information about what's going on there. Each notice, it would have to include a copy of the VA guidance that's designed to deter the sensationalism of suicide um, and provide information on warning signs the, and basically advertise resources such as the Veterans Crisis Line, readjustment counseling. The VA would have to respect the privacy and the dignity of, veteran, the, the dignity of veterans uh, and their families when they're collecting and reporting this information, but it's a requirement for that information to come to Congress again and as a part of those oversight duties for the Department of Veterans affairs that, that we are tasked with here in the House of Representatives. An additional piece of legislation, H.R. 2326. This is the, the Navy SEAL Chief Petty Officer William Mulder, he's a retired uh, Transition Improvement Act of 2019. The purpose of this bill, efforts to help military personnel prepare for civilian life, seek employment, and basically expand uh, those opportunities under this piece of legislation. The bill, it would authorize grants to community job assistance groups, offer employment training services outside of military basis. Uh, last thing that I want to talk to you on this front is 
is uh, a bill that we uh, introduced in the last Congress, the Improving Veterans Access to Congressional Services Act. That piece of legislation, it began with, uh, I opened up the first ever congressional office inside of a VA facility. We came up with legislation after that to allow all members of Congress to have the opportunity to open up uh, congressional offices inside of their VA hospitals because it took about a year to bring that to fruition, to go through all the hoops that the VA wanted me to jump through in order to open up that office inside the VA to go out there and serve our veterans. Uh, now we worked that, that piece of legislation through committee in the last Congress and now we're continuing to work that, that piece of legislation now through this Congress. I have another partner, uh, Representative Darren Soto from up in the Orlando area, who opened up the second congressional office space inside of the Orlando VA hospital. So now what you have going on in these two VA hospitals I think is something amazing. In the West Palm Beach VA, I hold office hours there. Representative Frankel, Deutsch and Hastings all also hold office hours there as well at different times uh, in, that, in that same shared space that we have there. So you have the eyes in West Palm Beach of four members of Congress going in and out of there each and every week. In the Orlando VA, Representative Soto has been holding office hours there. And you also have now Representatives uh, Murphy and uh, Representatives Demings holding office hours there in the Orlando VA in order to go out there and serve their veterans better. But not just to serve them better, as I've said already, we in Congress we're tasked with oversight of the Department of Veterans Affairs. So one of the most important aspects of that oversight to me and why I think it's so important that we hold those office hours inside of the VA is this. If you want to understand a problem, you have to be present to witness the problem, to see the problem, to see what goes right and what goes wrong. And in having the, these offices inside of the VA treatment facilities, what that means is, is representatives like myself or our staff, we're inside of the VAs each and every week seeing what goes right and what goes wrong. Make sure that we try to, to ensure that what went wrong never happens again and that what goes right we see replicated time and time again. That's the goal of this, to serve our veterans better every single day, make sure they're getting the best possible care. That's what we've been working on on the veterans front during this week. As always, great to speak to you. Honored to serve you here in the House of Representatives. Always look forward to seeing you all around. Wish you all the best.